डम स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू वंस अगेन टू अवर लेसन नंबर एट आर स्केलेटल सिस्टम एंड द स्किन लेट्स रिवाइज वंस अगेन वॉट एवर वी हैव लर्ट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर सो फॉर स्टूडेंट्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी स्पोक अबाउट वॉट डू यू एग्जैक्टली मीन बाय द स्किन सो आई होप सो यू रिमेंबर दैट द मीनिंग ऑफ द स्किन द स्किन इज नथिंग बट वॉट अवर आउटर पार्ट ऑफ अवर बॉडी so the outer most covering of our body we call it as what skin okay so you all are aware about that during uh, summer season or when we do any kind of the heavy physical activity that time we sweat a lot am i right why we sweat a lot because the reason is that our normal body temperature is 37 degree celsius correct so while doing heavy physical activity or during summer season our body temperature increases so when our body produces a sweat sweat is present in the form of water and water which is produced on our skin in the form of sweat it cools down our body and it brings our body temperature to the normal so that's why sweating is also important and one most important thing as we have learnt in the last lecture not only the sweating but there are different different functions of the skins are there so what are the different type of the functions which we have learnt in the last lecture so we have learnt in the last lecture that skin protects our internal organs like muscles bone and the organ system and at the same time our skin it preserves the moisture of the body so i hope so you remember that during winter season our skin becomes very dry and during summer season our skin becomes moist okay so the maintaining the moisture of our body it is just because of the skin and at the same time our skin is responsible for synthesizing the vitamin d and first of all it is producing the sweat as well and most importantly skin is protecting us from the heat and the cold and last but not least the skin is responsible for the sensory organ of the touch so whatever type of the sensation we get that is just because of what skin is that clear students what we have learned in the last lecture and most importantly we also learned that the skin is basically made up of two layer the outer layer we call it as epidermis and the inner layer we call it as what dermis so the outer layer of the skin is epidermis and the lower layer is called as what dermis and in the subcutaneous layer the fat molecules are deposited and this subcutaneous layer it is responsible for maintaining our body temperature okay so i hope so till now you must have understood very well in detail so now let's see students have you ever observed your skin and the skin of your grandmother have you seen any changes of the skin so you must have seen that many of the time just observe here here it is a grandmother okay so look at the skin of the grandmother and here is a baby and look at the skin of a baby as well what difference here you notice students can you guess what you are you see just observe the skin of grandmother and the skin of the baby what you can see here in this case yeah of course we see the wrinkles on the skin am i right so the wrinkles on this skin it is basically occurs in the older people am i right so our skin it ages as the person becomes old okay and in the case of the younger people the skin is very tight so as the skin is very tight it doesn't shrink immediately but as the person gets older and older the proportion of the fat beneath the skin it get reduces so when the layer of the fat reduces in our body the skin gets shrinkens so on our skin level there is a deposit of the fat but when the fat layer gets decrease and decrease and decrease so that time the skin becomes shrinks okay so this is the basic and this is a major difference between the older people and the younger people so in the older people on the skin we see the wrinkles and on younger people the skin is very tight the reason is that as i told you the fat layer reduces in the older people so this is the basic reason behind the wrinkle which usually occurs on the skin is that clear and one more thing student do you know that the skin color the skin color of our body it is because of 
there is one color pigment which is present in our body and do you know that which color pigment is present in our body the color pigment which is present in our body we call it as what melanin what we call it as melanin so the melanin it is the color pigment which is present in the cells of the epidermis so this melanin is responsible for our skin color that means what if the uh, uh, concentration of the melanin is more then the skin color will be more darker if the concentration of the melanin is low then the skin color will be fairer so depending upon so the depending upon the concentration of the melanin in the skin more melanin the skin color will be darker less melanin the skin color will be lighter so whatever our body skin color is there that skin color it just because of the melanin is that clear so the people are darker the people are fairer the people are whitish that is just because of the color pigment that's all so in some people this melanin is more and in some people this melanin is less are you getting my point over here so for the color of the skin the melanin and even sometime the climate is also responsible that's why you must have noticed that the south african uh, south african people they are mostly darker and whereas the australian people they are very fairer in uh, skin tone why that is just because of the climate so depending upon the climate our skin color is also determined are you getting my point over here so the melanin protects our skin and the inner part from the ultraviolet rays so that's why the melanin the skin pigment which is present in our body it is very essential have you ever noticed that in some people the skin becomes white white patches so the whitening of the skin it is responsible because of the decrease in the melanin if the melanin concentration goes low then that person suffer from the harmful effect of the ultraviolet rays are you getting my point so that's why students always remember that the melanin is responsible for skin color and not that individual so that's why students always remember that you must have seen that most of the time we discriminate the people between the uh, based upon their skin color which is totally unscientific and wrong don't you think that you must have noticed that in your friend circle also most of the time we have noticed that the children tease each other depending upon their skin color like depending upon the if the someone is of the darker skin we call them as uh, we call them by their skin color if the person is too much fair then we tease them that uh, that person is too fair so students always remember that it is completely wrong to discriminate the people between uh, based upon their skin color so always remember that the skin color it is just because of the pigment which is present in the body that's all so we don't have to tease anybody just because of the skin color always remember that and again avoid the temptation of using artificial means to be a fair why we want to become a fair our natural skin color is better as compared to the artificial chemical which we apply on our skin so always remember that the natural skin is skin color is better and it is protecting us from the ultraviolet rays from getting damaged is that clear and one more thing students have you noticed that majority of the indian people got the jet black hair color and whereas you must have noticed that africans and etc or even australian people they got the blonde hair color am i right even the hair color is just because of the pigment called as what melanin so even this melanin pigment determines the color of our hair so suppose of uh, suppose if the melanin is pure if it is in more in color then our hair color is jet black hair so the black color of our hair it is because of what melanin pigment and suppose if the melanin it is very lighter then that time the skin color uh, the hair color it becomes brown in color are you getting my point and suppose if in the melanin the sulfur is present then hair color becomes slightly reddish in color are you getting my point over here so even our hair color it is based upon the pigment called as what melanin so did you understand student who is responsible for our skin color and the hair color 
yeah suppose if you are applying any kind of the chemical artificially then don't say that your color your melanin decrease and increase etc i am just talking about the natural hair color and the natural skin color understood so more the concentration of the melanin the darker the skin color and the hair color the lesser the concentration of the melanin the lighter your skin color and the lighter your hair color is that clear what i told you here okay so always remember students once again i am telling you stop discriminating people based upon their skin color which is totally unscientific and wrong is that clear and most importantly one of the most important thing which i would like to tell you that over here uh, do you know that till now we learnt about many type of the bones which are present in our body okay so as a fun fact i would like to tell you over here this there is a smallest bone which is present in our body and do you know that that smallest bone which is present in our body where it is present the smallest bone which is present that is present in our ear okay so the in ear there is one smallest bone which is present okay so here in the ear region there is one smallest bone which is present and that smallest bone is called as what stirrup okay so stirrup it is the uh, you can see that it is of the size of uh, grain of the rice it is of the size of grain of rice and this is the smallest bone in our body so the smallest bone which is present inside our body we call it as what stirrup is that clear what i told you guys over here okay and at the same time as i told you about the smallest bone in our body there is longest and strongest bone is also present inside our body and the longest bone is present in our thigh region okay so in our thigh region there is a bone which we called is at for femur okay so femur it is our thigh bone it is the longest and the strongest bone in our body is that clear so the smallest bone is present in the ear which we call it as a stirrup and the lo longest bone it is present in our body which is called as what femur or the thigh bone is that clear small bone is a stirrup longest bone is the femur so i hope so students you must have understood whatever we have learnt here in this topic okay so let's revise once again so far what we have learnt here in this topic so here we completed our lesson number 8 our skeletal system and the skin but let's revise once again so far what things we have completed in this chapter so here in this chapter students i told you that our body has many type of the bone in adult 206 bones are present and in child 200 300 bones are present so bones and cartilage together they form our skeletal system is that clear and this skeletal system it is responsible for giving shape and support to our body and most importantly the outer part of our body we call it as what skin is that clear and this skeletal system and the skin it perform important function of protecting the body and the internal parts so that's why always remember that we must take care of our skeletal system and this skin and at the same time as i told you our body bone they are divided into two part appendicular skeleton and axial skeleton in axial skeleton skull rib cage backbone these bones are included in the axial skeleton which are present in the central part of our body whereas in the appendicular skeleton the arms and the legs they are present is that clear so all these bones comes together and they form the main parts of the human skeletal system and we again learned about our skin so the skin is made up of two layer the outer layer we call it as the epidermis and the lower layer it is called as what dermis and most importantly just i told you that the longest bone which is present in our body it is a femur and the smallest bone which is present in our body that is a stirrup and at the same time the melanin is the color pigment it is present in our body which is responsible for the hair color and the skin color so i hope so students you must have understood this topic in detail okay so we'll stop here bye bye take care